I don't know about you, but when I was studying for the MCAT, I heard a lot of people tell me things like, there's no such thing as a trick question. The AAMC doesn't want you to miss questions on the MCAT. That's just not true. The point of the MCAT is to identify really good problem solvers. So yeah, you're gonna have some misleading questions on there. And there are inevitably questions that are misleading and answer choices that are meant to be distracting. That's just the nature of testing and of selecting future doctors that have a heightened attention to detail. The MCAT is going to try to throw you off. And it's gonna do that by playing on human psychology to throw off either your timing or your confidence. In this video, I'm gonna identify four ways that the MCAT frequently tries to confuse you and show you how to avoid those traps. My name's John, I'm a first year medical student, a 90th percentile MCAT score, and a previous tutor for one of the big name MCAT companies. But today, I'm gonna to show you four of the MCAT's sneaky tricks and how to get around them. If you learned something from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and that subscribe button so that you can see more content from us in the future. The first trap that the MCAT throws your way is what we call time traps. The MCAT is absolutely flooded with information that you don't have to know to get the answer correct. And it can pop up in the passage or the question stem or the answer choices themselves. The best way to avoid this trap is to make sure that you stick to the strategies that we've shown you in previous videos and just be cognizant of the fact that you do not have to understand everything or know all the sciences to get the answers correct. You just have to know the basic sciences really well and then be able to problem solve and apply them. For help on sticking to the, just the sciences of the passage, make sure to check out our strategy video called the flowchart method, where I teach you what's important in a science passage and how to navigate that. If you're getting behind on your timing because of how a question is worded, make sure to check out our video titled Simplifying the Question Stem, where Maggie shows you how to pinpoint exactly what they want in a question. The best way for the MCAT to throw you off and make you miss multiple questions is by using a time trap. The other traps I'm about to cover, they're going to impact your ability to answer one question. But if you get behind on your timing, then that's going to impact how you answer multiple questions or even multiple passages towards the end of your section. So make sure that you stay on track with your timing and you can check out our timing video if you're not quite sure on what that looks like. You can notice in just a couple of these questions that I pulled out quickly that they can throw time traps your way by making you do a bunch of math or by making the question really confusing or wordy or even by making you go back and read in the passage by referencing in paragraph three. There's no way around that. You've got to do the math. You've got to read the passage. But being aware of, hey, I only have one minute to answer this question. I have to get faster at this math while you're prepping is going to allow you to not get caught in this time trap. The second trap that the MCAT throws your way is absolute answer choices. Absolute answer choices are those that don't allow for wiggle room. They contain very strong words like never or always or only, that's a big one. And they completely rule out the possibility for any other alternative. These answer choices are generally not correct, although they can be, because they're saying that the alternative is literally impossible. And because we're trying to be doctors, we know that everything is within the realm of possibility for the most part. I mean, Germex only kills like 99.99% of bacteria. The MCAT's usually going to make these answer choices attractive by leaning into an obvious thought process that you're probably thinking yourself and then adding one of these strong qualifiers like only or never. A good commonplace example would be the idea of glutamate, the amino acid, always acts as an acid. The truth of that is that glutamate is always learned as an acidic amino acid because it is acidic at physiological pH. However, it's theoretically possible to manipulate the surroundings and the pH around that glutamate and make it act as a base, aka have it accept protons. I'm going to throw up two questions on the screen. In the first question, it says the passage suggests that Misselson's opposition to development of biological weapons was based in part on the claim that what? And you can see that answer choice A says biological weapons do not work. That's very harsh. It's strong. It leaves no wiggle room. Answer choice A is incorrect. Even though in the passage, the author says 
that he believes biological weapons are ineffective or that they're not quite as effective as they could be, the author doesn't say that biological weapons do not work. The correct answer for this one is D. The second question says, according to the passage, bands of Paleo-Indians did not trade with one another. What is the evidence for this statement? Answer choice A says tools of a band came only from local resources. Notice that you still have a strong quantifier, only. However, the correct answer for this question is A. This goes to show you that absolute answer choices does not completely disqualify a question choice from being correct, but it does raise the burden of proof. You would need very, very strong evidence in your passage that would support if you were going to click an answer that has a word like only or never or always. So in general, if you see one of those strong qualifiers, be very cautious of picking it. They're usually not correct. The third trap that the MCAT throws your way quite often, I like to call name dropping. Name dropping is a phrase that I made up, but it's what I call it when the MCAT uses a familiar word or phrase from a passage to make an answer sound attractive. It's kind of like that guy at work that doesn't actually know what you're talking about, but he likes to use buzzwords. That's what the MCAT does. And that's what name dropping is. But students fall for this just like your manager falls for it all the time. If a student falls for this, it's usually because she or he is answering a question based off of what feels right rather than intellectually thinking through each answer choice and crossing out what they know to be false. Name dropping is really prominent in the card section of the exam, but I want to emphasize name dropping is not a reason that an answer choice is false. It is a reason that an answer choice is attractive and they will not make correct answer choices attractive. Put that together, name dropping is used to make an incorrect answer choice seem attractive usually. Therefore, an answer choice that includes name dropping can be correct, but just like with absolute answer choices, it's just exceedingly rare. If you look at this question, the associated passage, you'll notice that most of these answer choices were actually mentioned in the passage. And most of the answer choices are pulled fairly verbatim. The only one that isn't is answer choice B. And that's the correct answer. So the AAMC is trying to make you think answer choices A, C, and D are correct, by throwing some familiar words in there so that subconsciously you're thinking, oh, I remember that. I remember that from the passage. I don't know if it's gonna answer the question, but I remember it from the passage, so I'm gonna click it. And that's why you have to make sure that you're answering each question with either solid science or solid logic to back it up. The fourth and final trap that the AMC throws your way revolves purely around answer choices. And this is when an answer choice is true but it doesn't answer the question that's asked. It would be like somebody being like, hey John, what's your social security number? And I say, well, I wear a size 11 shoe. It's true, but it doesn't answer the question. I call these answer choices cop-outs because the students that generally pick these know that they don't answer the question, but they're too scared to be wrong and pick an answer choice that they're not sure about. So it feels safe to them. Remember, the MCAT is not asking you which answer statement is true. It's asking you which statement best answers the question they ask. So it's within the realm of possibility that multiple answer choices will be true statements. But you have to pick the one that best answers the question. The question that I'm showing on the screen right now probably looks really familiar to you. And that's because I used it to teach name dropping as well. If you look at answer choice B, it says the biological weapons research is very expensive. That is mentioned nowhere in the passage and it doesn't answer the question that's being asked. But in your head, it sounds reasonable. You're thinking, I mean, I know that I can't afford biological warfare on my enemies. And so you just click it because it sounds rational, but it's not supported. And specifically because this is a car's passage, it doesn't fit the main idea. Therefore, this is a cop-out answer choice. It's, it's probably true. I'm sure that is expensive, but it doesn't answer the question at hand because it's not using the passage information that's given to you. I do believe that the MCAT is trying to trick you but it's fairly consistent in its approach to trick you so we can figure it out and these are just four ways to do so thanks for watching the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and i will see you next time